Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When it was evening of the day of the resurrection, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the hands in his mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen me and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Jesus appeared. Well, maybe Thomas was out feeding the hungry or helping a sick friend, or maybe Thomas was looking for Jesus. Maybe Thomas had heard the rumor that Jesus was alive, Jesus was resurrected, whatever that meant. So Thomas was not there. Thomas was in the streets looking for Jesus. One of the things about the resurrected Jesus that we need to sort of begin to understand is the fact that nobody really recognized him after the resurrection. Not until Jesus said something, did something, ate something. People, even Mary Magdalene, right there at the empty tomb, thought that Jesus was the gardener until Jesus spoke to her. Other people felt him, sort of felt that feeling in, in their hearts, in your heart that says, oh, there's somebody special here, but they didn't rightly recognize him. So when the disciples, when they were in this locked room and 
Jesus walked through the locked door and said to them, Peace be with you. They were a little startled. They were thrilled and happy. But they were like, we see, we see the marks in your hands. We see you just walk through a door. We know the tomb was empty. But what a mystery. Who are you? Are you Jesus of Nazareth? Jesus the Messiah? Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Who are you? Thomas may have been looking for Jesus the healer, Jesus the compassionate one, Jesus the shepherd. Thomas may have been looking for the one, the suffering servant, if you will, the, the words that are used from Isaiah, the one who suffers with us. Or Thomas may have been looking for the Messiah, the one who was going to overturn the Romans. We were going to become free again. And yet, Thomas really found none of those until Thomas was there again. And Jesus once again appeared. Jesus said, well, I know I've heard that you were doubting this, and here are my wounds. Go ahead and touch me. But Thomas didn't wait at all. Thomas knew exactly who he was looking at. You are the Lord. You are the God. But what does that mean? When you look at the many different images we have of Jesus, you think about the disciples were sort of on the cusp. When John wrote this gospel, a lot of the eyewitnesses that had known Jesus walking in Galilee were dying. So that the emphasis was, who do you say that Jesus is? Without seeing the man, who, who is this? There were about a thousand believers in Jerusalem at the time of G Jesus' resurrection and the 50 days later. And then all of a sudden, it was like, now what do we do? And there was this huge transformation into believing Jesus. And then having this whole buffet, if you will, of the different images that we have of Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Even today, we have different images. Say, for instance, here we have Jesus hanging on the cross. We have a crucifix. If you've ever gone to the Pueblos in New Mexico or in... Arizona into the they have the crucifix hanging they have multiple crucifixes hanging on the wall that are literally bleeding and that is the image that some people need to feel that Jesus suffered and was with us now when we are needing a a companion, a God who knows what it's like to suffer, to bleed, to grieve. Then we also have the images of Jesus who looks like he just came out of Planet Fitness. He is like this big, brawny victor. He is this amazing kind of resurrected Christ who has defeated sin and and, and <laughs> in, in about 1930, there was a seminal book that came out called Christus Victor, which indicated, written by a Swedish theo theologian, that presented the idea that Jesus was the victor. 
over sin, over the devil, over all. Now this book was just written after World War II and World War I and all the suffering that occurred and the sense that Christ Victor overcame all evil. And then you have this sort of amorphous, mystical idea that Christ cannot even be put into a box. So as a consequence, we have things like the cross without Christ. We just have the cross. This one has a pretty little decoration of ivy. So where is Jesus? We have the benefit of having multiple images of Jesus in our minds, and we transform our ideas of how that is depending on where we are in our lives. It's all the same Jesus, though. When I was a freshman in college, I went to Georgetown, Jesuit College. Um, I lived in St. Mary's dormitory. I was one of the first women, class of women there. Um, and I was, I was the first one in, in the room. My roommate was, came later. And there on the wall was the crucifix. Now, I'm a, I'm a low Protestant. And I looked at this crucifix and I thought, this is going to be a long year if I look at my freshman year of college and I'm looking at Jesus hanging on a cross every day. So I took the crucifix down and put it in the bottom of my drawer. Uh, my roommate never knew it was there. Until the last day we were there and I said, oh, you know what, maybe I better put this back on the wall. That was not my image of Jesus at that time. But about 20 years ago, when I was going through some difficult times and those that I loved were going through difficult times, that image of Jesus on the cross made a huge difference to me. Because somehow or another, I felt that God was identifying with me and I was identifying with God. Somehow or I, I had this sense that Jesus knew, and it made me feel less alone, more supported, the strength of Jesus in being with me. There are other times when I pray for Ukraine, and I want Jesus looking like the victor. I want to say, Jesus, Bring peace. Jesus is all of them. Wherever you go, wherever you walk into a different chapel, you may see a Jesus that does not look like a blonde, blue-eyed person. You may see one that's of color. We each have our own image of Jesus and we also transform and to know each. But notice at the very end when Thomas did see Jesus, it was in his community. And sometimes we need to come to church and worship in the community because then we can see Jesus in each other. We can feel that presence without any image to say, oh, I see Jesus in you. I see Jesus in you. I see Jesus in you. We do have the tremendous benefit of not being constricted to the, to the body. But now we have the blessing of the resurrection and the blessing of God's presence through Jesus in our entire life. No matter where we are, where we go, and what we need, God will provide.